industries that are hot, sectors set to outperform the market. That's what's here in Zach's industry rank analysis. This time around, we take a look at a very key industry that is going to tell us something about the overall health of the economy, we hope, with Charles Roplet, our senior market analyst for Zax.com. And, uh, and along those lines, I'm going to have an important question for you as we get into this discussion. But we're looking at regional banks. That's what's on your radar for this time around. You tell us the outlook is still uncertain as far as this small group of banks is concerned. And why is that? Yeah, and it's really not just one small group. We're actually talking about about four or five industry groups here. But we, over the past few weeks, we've seen analysts cut expectations, fully or forecast on 100 regional banks. So it's not just that they're targeting one or two banks, they're going across the whole sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reasons are pretty obvious. We're looking at an economy that's still in a recession. We're looking at foreclosures that are going to continue rising. Even though we did have a rise in mortgage apps for the last week, uh, we have a lot of adjustable rate mortgages that have still yet to reset. Uh, so that's going to be problematic. People are still losing jobs. That's going to cause more credit card defaults to occur. And we're also looking at a shifting regulatory environment. So all that creates headwinds for the banks. Um, and it, even if we ignore all the ongoing issue of, tox of toxic assets and that whole situation, yep. if, even if that wasn't a problem, when you look at everything good that's going to continue happening, um, we're still looking at uncertainty. And it's really difficult for analysts to judge exactly how big of loan loss provisions these banks need or just exactly how bad all these defaults and foreclosures are going to get. Well, you talk about mortgage apps rising in the latest reporting week, but home purchase loan applications actually fell. So that mortgage activity is probably tied to refis, right? And it's tied to refis. And I think it's also important to realize that these are just applications. It doesn't mean that people are actually getting the loans. I mean, right. you and I can, uh, can apply for whatever we want to. It doesn't mean we're going to get it. And, right. uh, and of course, some of the stuff we might apply for, we may not want anyway. Well, but yeah, so I think true. it's a big disconnect just because you see an application for mortgage. Obviously, someone has the intent to borrow money. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean the bank's going to accept them, especially if they have a borderline credit, say they're around... 570 or so, you know, they're kind of, it's, it's still very tough for someone to get that. Really, I still think you're probably looking at credit scores of at least 600. So if you're kind of borderline or, you know, now banks are nicking you based on where you're using your credit card. I've seen right. stories that, you know, if you suddenly get a massage or you suddenly go to a bar, the bank, the credit card company is going to look at you and wonder what you're doing, right. uh, even though it could be something completely innocent. So yeah, yeah. you have all that thrown into the mix, which we didn't have to deal with 12 months ago. And a score in the 400s probably gets you a debit card, and that's about it. <laughs> exactly. It's one of those prepaid visas they <laughs> advertise on uh, late night TVs. But along the lines of economic health and what's going to try to foretell economic health going forward, is it a situation where the market cannot make any solid gains, and the economy cannot make any solid gains without a financial sector recovery, or is it the other way around? Will an economic rebound help the financial sector to move higher? Well, I think they're kind of tied in together. I think when you look at the markets, though, um, I don't think we need the financial sector to lead the market higher. We can't see it in other sectors, and right now it looks like maybe technology might help us. Yeah. But I think when you do look at the overall economy, um, it's hard to separate the two because we do need banks lending. We do need credit available, and the more available credit is, uh, the more business spending we'll see, the more consumer spending we'll see. But I think the big question is when you kind of look at the hole we've dug ourselves into, particularly from the consumer standpoint, we're looking at several years of really consumers getting themselves out of these debt problems. And I think we really need to move away, as a society a little bit away from this, you know, I'll, I'll buy things on credit and figure out how to pay, pay for it later to being a little bit more fiscally responsible. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using credit. And certainly if you have a big purchase and you can lock in 0% or very low interest for two years, well, it doesn't make much sense to pay cash up front as long as you know you can make those payments and you're living within your budgetary means. Uh, but so I think the market can actually rebound without the financial sector. But I think when you look at the overall economy, I don't think you'll see a sharp improvement in the economy till we get through this phase uh, where we start to see foreclosures decline, the rate of credit card defaults decline. And I think we need to see stabilization really in consumer balance sheets. You talk about jumbo mortgages, maybe the next shoe to drop. How so? Well, you're seeing a lot of, actually a lot of scuttlebutt right now talking about people with those jumbo mortgages not being able to make their payments. Um, and it makes sense when you look at the broader economy. People are losing their jobs. We're seeing 
you know, salaries remain stagnant. It's certainly affecting bonuses uh, for everybody outside Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. So all that can happen. The other interesting thing I might point out to that I did mention in this article, uh, there actually was an article recently in Milwaukee, uh, I believe it's a Sentinel Journal, talking about how some banks are foreclosing on people but not taking, uh, taking the titles back. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea how widespread it is, but that's just another problem problem facing the uh, banks. But certainly when you look at those general more loans, if we do see higher defaults, that's a really big problem because you not only have a larger dollar amount of those mortgages, but you're also looking at a house that's harder to sell even at foreclosed rates simply because you have fewer people that could actually afford that house and the corresponding property taxes associated with it. All right, find out more about this particular sector that Charles is focused in on this week. When you go to Zax.com's homepage and you scroll down until you get to the headline right under the banner of Industry Rank Analysis, that headline, when you click on it, will take you right to this most current text piece. With Charles Roteblatt, I'm Terry Ruffalo.